are concerned. There can be a variation <coughs> in terms of the literals, how the literals are laid, that we will see subsequently. But uh, in general, the, the other components which are uh, usually present in a drip irrigation system, they have been already discussed. At this juncture, we would like to look into the, again, some thumb rules which have uh, uh, been brought out with respect to the experience and this can be quite a useful uh, uh, thumb rule in terms of the general estimates. requirement. Now these are given in the form of with respect to the type of crop. and uh, with respect to the row spacing the other items which are uh, and these details are expressed in terms of are plants per hectare number of emitters per hectare and the liter length. The liter length is meters per hectare. This again, these are the average values which have been found uh, from uh, uh, various areas of the, the world. It has been seen that if you adopt these values, your uh, design will be quite within the range, within the required uh, uh, limitations or the constraints which you which you like to put the, uh, the design through. The types of uh, crops are divided into different categories, broad categories again, and the only categories which have been picked up in this particular uh, uh, table are those which are suitable for this type of irrigation. So you have uh, ordinary orchards where the row spacing is this is in meters, is around 6 meters. The plants per hectare in these type of orchards are around 250 and the emitters per hectare which are required, they generally vary within this range between 500 to 1500 and the liter length, the overall liter length in meters per hectare is around this value, 1,900 meters per hectare area. Then you have uh, dwarf orchards, which uh, also 
also includes the vineyards where you produce the, the wine grapes. In this case, the spacing is of the order of magnitude of around 3.7 meters and the other values which are again, you can say the average values, these are the, the meters per hectare and the length of liter which is required in meters per hectare. Then you have another category berries and white spaced row crops. And these deprecation systems are also being used these days for the row crops and two types of row crops have been um, recognized. One is the wide spaced row crops and close spaced row crops. In the case of wide space row crops, where the row spacing is around uh, 1.5 meters, you have these values, the order of magnitudes of the plants per hectare, the meters per hectare and the later length and meters per hectare is of this order of magnitude. Then you have the category where you again use the, the deprecation system as the greenhouse and close space row crops. In which case the spacing is still smaller in comparison to the, the previous case and you have these order of magnitudes. Now this will give you a general feeling that when you talk in terms of the, the density of this network of laterals which you are going to have, it will vary considerably with respect to what is the type of crop in general which you are catering to. In case you have those crops which are uh, of the type of orchards, which are individual tree plants or individual, uh, individual plants, the size can vary. That is why you have two categories. In one case, you have the full grown trees. In other case, you have the dwarf orchards where you have the plant sizes are smaller and their requirements are also going to be less in comparison because of their root system, the, the type of root system they have. And these are the general, the, the, the order of magnitudes only because this is not incorporating anywhere the effects of climate. And you have seen so far, you have seen that the climate has a very significant role to play in terms of uh, and the, the evapotranspiration activity. So the evapotranspiration activity, the, how much is the actual evapotranspiration is going to be decided by the climate only. So you cannot talk in terms of the specifics because the specifics will vary from one place to another place depending on what is the, the variation in the climate. But since in most of these cases when you talk of a specific type of uh, orchard, you will find that uh, since it has its uh, suitability to a particular climate, you will have the climate uh, variation very, very nominal because if you talk of, uh, if you are talking of wine, it has a suitability for a particular type of climate, but still it is not true that uh, it cannot, it cannot grow uh, when if there is, uh, uh, there is a, even a little variation in the climate, it can still grow. The, the variety will be different, there will be some other, um, some other uh, influences of the local climate, but you can have uh, different types of crops or the same crop under different climates and from that angle you cannot assume these things to be the specific values, they are only ranges which have been given uh, as a guideline to the designer. 
so that he can get a feeling that uh, how much when you start with the first initial estimate, you can start with some value which is reasonable and start uh, refining those designs to uh, arrive at a final design parameter or set of parameters. Okay. Now let's go on to the next very important uh, element of this, these systems which is called parameters. There are different names given to this. Sometimes you call them drippers or emitters. So, what is the role of the emitter? It is a device to apply water to the soil from the distribution system. Emitter is the device which ultimately supplies the water from the distribution system onto the, the ground surface at any point, whichever is the point of your interest. But we, do, we, we won't talk in terms of the point right now because we are going to uh, discuss the various types of these emitters which are available and is not only a point source, it can be a line source also. Let's, let's classify them accordingly. Uh, if I say the types of the emitters, you have two general types of emitters. One are point source emitters and the other category is the line source. We will come to their, uh, what do we mean by the point source and what do we mean by the, the line source emitters in a short while. But before that, it is equally important to, to know what are the attributes of emitters which are generally desirable um, by, the, by a designer. We like to have these attributes in our emitter. These attributes are, uh, they should be, the a specific type of emitter should be available. And small increments, of discharge. But you should have the category of the or the type of emitter should be such that you should be in a position to have different emitters with a very small incremental value of discharge. Let us say uh, an increment of 1 liters per hour. So, you should have emitters of the same type which is uh, which is able to give you a specific discharge rate. But the next one should be having a variation of as small as 1 liter per hour. Otherwise, you would not be able to have a flexibility in the design because in these cases, the amount of water which you are dealing with or which you are, which you are uh, talking in terms um, of, they are very small. So, if you have uh, small increments, you will be having a very good flexibility in terms of selection of these emitters and having uh, designs which can be done, which can be uh, taken, which can take care of the requirements, all those various constraints quite effectively. Then 
the other attribute is the flow should be controlled within narrow limits uh, as a function of operating pressure. which literally means that if we change the operating pressure, the, the change in the flow should be again a very nominal. Then this is another uh, attribute which is important from another aspect, a large flow area. And in general, you should have a meter which has a large flow area because of the fact that if you have very small flow areas, you will have the clogging problems. So to avoid the problems of clogging, if you have large flow areas, it will be much desirable. Then the emitter should also resist degradation and the degradation can be due to temperature fluctuations. and the solar radiation. That means you should uh, choose the material of the, the emitter in such a manner that the degradation is minimum over time because of the temperature fluctuation which you will normally have in every place and because of the solar radiation they are uh, uh, some emitters which might become brittle, their, their design characteristics might change, their behavior might change after uh, a very small duration of uh, operation. You should also ensure that the useful life of emitters should be known. This is again, uh, since all these emitters, they have a definite life, if the designer is knowing that how much is the life of the emitter, when he makes the, the computation, when he uh, goes in for the, the total cost analysis of the, the system, he can, he can design the system more effectively if he knows that what is the, what is the useful life. Uh, span of the emitter because this is this is the most important device in the total system because unless the water comes out of the emitter, whatsoever you have in the, the background uh, before the emitters is of no use because ultimately this is you have taken all the trouble you have provided all the other uh, components of the system just to ensure that the, prop, the proper amount of water flows through the emitters and is, is dumped onto the, the desired place at the, uh, at the proper time and with respect to the proper rate. So if it is not doing that function, then it is a, is a wastage of uh, uh, the money and your system cannot run successfully. So you will have to you will have to abandon the whole uh, operation maybe. Now, we will go on to the, the description, a brief description of these emitters. What are the various types of emitters which are available? Because I'll, I will be only uh, discussing with you some of the common types which are, uh, which are in the market and which are uh, more um, popular with the users, 
there are many because this is growing into a very successful and very big industry and uh, you will find that there is a new model coming, there is a lot of research going into this uh, area and uh, since most of the emitters they have some problem the, or the other and uh, uh, even the, from the cost point of view to make it more cost effective. People are trying various materials, people are trying various shapes, people are trying various uh, sizes of these emitters so that they can have more flexibility, they can give uh, the, the designer and the user more flexibility in terms of uh, the usage of these drippers under varied conditions. If you can use the same dripper in, in uh, a very large range of conditions, you will be saving uh, a lot of expense which is otherwise will become essential if you have to uh, have different emitters for different uh, types of crops and for different seasons. So from those angles you will find that there, there are many types of emitters which are available in the market and uh, let us discuss some of those which are, uh, uh, have become quite common. Now we have uh, two categories as we have just mentioned, one is the point source emitters these point source emitters as the name suggests they are applying the, the water at a particular location at a particular point of the, the field. So each emitter is, is trying to cater to one individual point of the area. That's why they are, they are called uh, point emitters. Whereas the line emitter on the other hand is, is catering to a, a elongated length of the, the area. So along that line, but in, in both the cases, you will uh, find that as far as the outlets are concerned from where the water is ca coming, they are individual points only. In the case of line source, you are having uh, those points more closely uh, and, uh, placed. So ultimately when you look at the area of influence of each individual point, in the case of point source, they, they might not having any overlap, whereas in the case of line source, they will have the overlap. That is why there are two different names given to this. Let us look at the point source emitters. Uh, there are uh, various categories. One is the long path, long path spiral grooved long path spiral root and this case you have a, a system where you have this type of arrangement now this is the this is the inlet the water enters from here or I'll say entry now this is this, this is something this is a knob which goes on to the the lateral it just pierces the net lateral and uh, uh, this is the inlet point and then on this side you have a situation where you have a, a groove what is happening is that this is these are small little spiral grooves and all this this is the spiral area so what you are doing is that you are making the water go around these spirals so that they can, there can be some dissemination of uh, energy which is available because 
in most of the cases, the pressure which is prevalent in the laterals is much, much higher than the pressure what you want the water to come out with. So in all these emitters, there will be one general thing that there will be some way by which some mechanism which has been adopted by which you can have a lot, lot of um, energy dissipation. And that energy dissipation in some case is, is uh, uh, ensured by having uh, more area with the water has to travel. In this case is that only basically the long path spiral grouped, that's what the name suggests. So you are having the water enter um, the inlet and after that inlet you have a spiral path which is a very long path just to ensure that the energy is dissipated and then you have the water coming out of uh, this place, this is the outlet or the exit point for the water. Similarly, the same thing can also be done by um, having a, a long, small, long tube. So, accordingly you have another system where you might be having a, a very fine very fine tube and the end of this tube you have a an area which is enlarged area again for dissipation or dissipation of uh, energy and in this case this is called a capillary this is a capillary or spaghetti tubing and this tubing can also serve as an emitter. You have another type where you use the a different uh, uh, shape. This is basically a Again, in this case, you have this is the lowermost part. In this case, all the components have been shown separately. They have been detached. They are small um, disc sort of things which are uh, inserted in each other. This is the lowermost disc which is uh, in, the, in the form of a cup. And then you have, this is, this is called base. Then you have a spiral which regulates the flow. So that spiral is something of this nature. This is a spindle here. And then the water which is entering is moving through the spiral. So this is the spiral and on top of that you have a, a membrane and this membrane is a flat membrane. This membrane is used for pressure regulation. If you will put more pressure on this membrane, then it will uh, let less amount of water pass through the, the spiral because of this, uh, the, since it is a flexible membrane, you will find that uh, if you will have this loosely held, there can be more flow which can pass through the spiral. If you have the membrane which is, uh, uh, which is 
slightly tightened, you can reduce the flow. So there's another, and then you, on top of that, you have a, another cap. You can have a cap, which is uh, used to, which, can, which is put on the top so that no dust enters the, the, the total system. And this, this becomes a compact system. When you put them together, join them, or rather there can be a screw which can be tightened, then you will find that uh, this can be adjusted manually to uh, regulate the flows as per your requirement. Or there might be some calibration which is given in, the, in terms of some indicators that how much you have to tighten to get a proper uh, amount of flow. These are the various, uh, in some types of the point source emitters. Now, let's look at the line source emitters. Now, in the case of line source emitter, there is only one type of emitter which is very popular and that is basically a, a combination of two pipes. This is the lower pipe. If I take this action of this, this is the pipe. Now, this pipe has the openings. This will have an opening here somewhere at this level. Then on top of this, there is another pipe which is not a complete pipe which is only a, a segment of a pipe which is it's maybe half uh, uh, um, and only a it's not a complete circular pipe only a segment of the pipe which is put on top of this pipe and this is put on top here now this becomes a complete uh, single unit the water moves from this inner pipe the water runs in the inner pipe this is the liter and then the the water goes out of these these openings, the number of these openings is much larger than the number of openings from where the water is coming from the, the inside uh, pipe. So again, there is some level of the uh, energy dissipation because from this, the water is moving into another uh, pipe and the area is very large. The velocities will be much lower. And uh, secondly, is also having the distribution with respect to the spacing of these openings. So this is the exit point uh, for water. And similarly, there will be more. That is what is called the line source. Because now in this case, this length of the, the perforated tube this is basically having uh, is a tube which is having an inlet inside here and then the perforation on the, the top portion of the tube. This perforated uh, tube can cater to the requirements of uh, a row crop much easily than uh, uh, the other type of uh, the point source can, can take care of. So this is another uh, uh, emitter. This also will come under the category of emitters but a line source emitter. Now, it is also possible that these emitters which we have discussed, they can be, they can be placed in different manners. In some case, the point emitter of a particular type, it might be uh, put in line. That means the emitter is is not attached on the on the line of the 
the literature is not an online emitter, it is inline emitter. That means the, the emitter is embedded inside the two ends of the literature. So, let us see what are the various uh, arrangements which might be available uh, in different uh, types of these emitters. Let us take a case where you have a single exit long path emitter which is installed in line. So in that in this case what you will have you will have a the mechanism or the, the basic philosophy of the um, emitter will be that long path spiral um, strategy through which it will de uh, disseminate the, the energy which is available and we will just make a line sketch of this. Now, this is the emitter. This is the emitter which is is having then put in line. When you say in line, similarly, this is the go on this side. And when you say in line, that means you have your little. is put on this is embedded within the section of the lateral. So this is the the lateral the water is flowing from this end to this end and this is one section of the lateral the other section is joined through this uh, emitter. This arrangement is called the inline uh, emitter arrangement and in this particular case what is happening is that somewhere here if this is the center line of this pipe somewhere here you have the the entry point through which the water is flowing and entering the, the spiral. Now here this section will be having the spiral and the water, water moves from this and it goes through the spiral and somewhere here is the water exit. So it will it will move through the spiral around this uh, as we have seen in the previous case and by the time it comes out it will be at a much lower pressure and the discharges can be uh, regulated with respect to the, the general flow uh, the pressures prevailing in the, the laterals. There is a case of in line the same thing uh, if you want to use as uh, there are there are other situations where you have uh, another type of emitter the same the long path emitter which is laid in line but you have more uh, number of open in the outlets and the, those out outlets might be through the form of uh, some tubings which have been provided at some level here uh, um, I think I, I won't uh, go into the design or the variations of uh, different types of emitters because our time is not uh, we don't have that much time to discuss all these details my intention is just to give you the various uh, variations which are possible in terms of the philosophy 
how we can, how many types of emitters we have and how they are uh, uh, used, whether they are used in line or whether they are used online. Let's look at an online emitter now, which is of the type single exit orifice type emitter which is installed online. In this case, you have a Let's say that this is your little and you have this is what is the uh, the lower end of the emitter which has been pierced into the the little. section of the, the body of the emitter, the water enters water enters here, this is the orifice and this particular case you can see that uh, the dissemination of energy is through by having an orifice and then having a very enlarged area and then the water uh, moves out of, there is an opening here. So then after going through this enlarged area, water, this is the exit portion of the water. Another case, you might have another arrangement where uh, instead of having this enlarged area, you might have a orifice and then that orifice has uh, a spiral area. So uh, in that case, it will be the, it might have a, a vertex chamber in which there will be some dissemination of uh, energy and then the water moves out of that. So the, the, the basic philosophy remains the same. You have to provide some way by which you can disseminate the energy, the excess energy and also uh, have the sensitivity of uh, this arrangement so that by changing the pressure you must have some desirable change in the discharge. That is the, that is the basic philosophy. Then the other things which are important are we already discussed that you, you should not have uh, a situation where it gets clogged very fast. So from those angles uh, you will uh, see that these things, they, they are more in number, they are more in designs because of the fact that people are thinking in terms of achieving these objectives by having different types of designs and people keep on experimenting. That's why there are so many of them in the market and you can uh, select one uh, which, is, which is cheap enough as well as it delivers the, the goods. There is one more which is, which I will just uh, um, show you, which is known by the pressure compensating emitter. In this case, what they have used is This is only the, the part of uh, the emitter only. We have not shown the lower part, how it is uh, put onto the lateral. So this is only the part of the emitter. 
which is indicated here. In this case, what you have is that you have on this emitter you have a situation where you have a, a sort of uh, this is the flexible ring and along with that you have a, a diaphragm Now this diaphragm is having a, a port or opening here with the diaphragm. Now this diaphragm, depending on what is the pressure here, because the water is going from this end, and uh, then you also have a also have a, a notch here now when the when the pressure is less this membrane will be in this position in the present position this is the relaxed position of the membrane this present position is the relaxed position of the membrane when the pressure increases this membrane will have a tendency to go up and it might take a, a position which is somewhat here and because of that position it will have a tendency to reduce the discharge. The opening will reduce, the, this is the portion from where there is a portion here which is connected with this area and uh, this port is also open. The, the port will also have a tendency to get closed because of this, uh, this notch. The, the, the closer it will be with this wall, it will have less and less amount of water going into the, uh, this zone. So because of that, when the pressures are very high, it will, it will try to uh, have a the position of the membrane will be readjusted to control the discharge. And this, these are the openings for the water exit. So here again, the, the mechanism which is adopted is to ensure that by having the fluctuations in the pressure, you can you can have a mechanism by which you can have a, a control in the discharge. The discharge shouldn't vary much even if the pressure has, um, has uh, changed to a large extent. So within a range, you can, you can ensure that the discharge which is the requirement, the amount of water which you want to come out, it shouldn't, it shouldn't change much. And that is done by this diaphragm which is provided here. Now with that, I have given you a, a reasonably good idea about what are the various types of uh, emitters which you'll, uh, you might encounter when you, when you select from the range which is available. But ultimately, the, the usage, when you use the point source or the line source, it, they can be used for uh, all the types of crops which you have. For example, if you have a if you have a point source, now in the case of individual trees, if you have a point source, if this is the tree in plan, in the case of a point source, you might have the lateral, and if you have the point source, depending on the requirement of uh, the uh, the tree, you might have a, a number of those emitters put here 
maybe four of them, maybe eight of them, depending on what is the, the requirement of that particular uh, uh, plant. And also, the number can change with respect to their uh, age. In the beginning, they might require less water. You can, uh, you can have less number of uh, these emitters. At the same time, uh, you, you might have another arrangement where uh, you have, instead of one laterals passing this tree, there can be two laterals. In that case, you can have two emitters on each lateral. There can be another uh, situation where you want to use a line source for the, the same. You have this tree. You want to use the line source. So, in that case, you might have either one little and on that little, you might have a segment of perfor perforated uh, that, uh, emitter and that emitter will have these perforations. So, this is the, this is the line uh, source, which is again catering to the requirement of the tree. If one is not sufficient, you can have another one. The two liters going and uh, uh, two, two of these sections of perforated pipes taking care of the requirement. So there is no hard and fast rule. Uh, similarly, if you are uh, talking of the other extreme, which is the row crop, so if you take the row crop, now in one case I can have a, a row crop there is the one row of the crop, there is another row of the crop. So, if I want to, um, let us say that you have a similar situation. Now, in one case, for this row crop, if I want to use the point source, I can have this one later going through the row crop and having uh, these individual emitters catering to the requirement of the total row. Only thing is that the spacing of the emitters will have to be adjusted uh, in such a manner that you are, uh, you are taking care of the requirements of both the rows. And in some cases, if the rows are close enough and the requirements of the crops are not very high, you can even use a single row of, a uh, single literal can cater to four rows and two rows on this side, two rows on this side of the crop. It all is a function of what is the demand, what is the requirement of the crop, what is the type of the soil. So many, all those things you are quite aware of now, that how we, all, all those things influence. Similarly, if you have a, a, a row, you can also use a, the, the line source are catering to the requirements of the row crop. So, these things can be used interchangeably and there is a lot of flexibility which is available to the, the designer. He has to, he has to go beyond this uh, the layout and uh, beyond these, these details only. He has to go to the level of even going, going in for the cost benefit analysis. How much is the cost which is uh, which he has to incur. So, when you talk of these designs, you have to go to that level, you have to go to the level of uh, uh, the efficiencies, those will, uh, of course, will uh, go through all those things. The, the details which are uh, the technical details and then ultimately you have to also look at the financial aspects of these designs. Okay. Any question at this stage? Okay, then we'll stop here.